than he should have. Is this evidence of reincarnation? How else can these children remember another life? The case files of Dr. Jim Tucker will yield more clues. That's it. Thank you very much. Questions, yeah. different things together, but I want to tell you something. Why does the Torah does not allow us to call souls? The source is when King, King Saul was very nervous because we had a war with Amalek tomorrow, starting, and he didn't know what to do. And he called the spirit of, of prophet Samuel, Samuel the prophet, which lived a few years before, he called him, and, and the, this is what the Torah says, the Torah said that Samuel got very nervous when he called him back into this world. And he told him, why did you upset me to bring me back to this world? And the Torah explained that he was nervous that God took him out of heaven and brought him back to this life. He got very nervous. So by calling the dead people into this world, we may be disturbed their peace of mind or the peaceful place where they are. Or, or God forbid, in a not good place that they are. We have to know one thing. After a person dies, there are a few possibilities what can happen with him. One is, he's being reincarnated for another test in another place, in another body, for another lifetime. That's one way. There's another possibility that he's not going to be reincarnated as a human being, is going to be reincarnated as an animal, which means the spiritual soul is being pushed into a body of a dog or a snake or a bird or a crow or a cow or anything like that. And until this animal will be killed or will be slaughtered, as he has to be all that period of time with a tremendous amount of suffering. Why? Because when you take the pure soul of a human being and glue it together with the nefesh, with the lower part of the animal, it's a terrible suffering for the soul. That's what the Kabbalah explained. And that's a punishment for his crimes against God in his previous life. Sometimes he's been reincarnated in fruits or vegetables, which means you picked up an orange, you have no idea that you just took some, a, a fruit that contains in it a soul of a person that died and was reincarnated in that orange. If you're going to make a bracha before you eat, you release the soul from that orange and it goes back to heaven and finish his correction. If not, he has to be reincarnated in another food until somebody will release him. That's why we say in a, once a year near Pesach, we say Birkat Ilanot. if you remember the test, the, the text, the text is, that there are spiritual images inside the trees. Sometimes there is reincarnation in raw material, such as rocks, sand, and all kinds of raw materials around us. We have no idea to know that. And sometimes the person is not being reincarnated anymore. He, chas v'shalom, goes to a place called hell, Genom. And in hell, there are seven different sections which the Torah describes from A to Z how they look and what really happened over there. And sometimes there's a place that is worse than hell. It's called Kafa Kela. Kafa Kela, the Torah says that the worst wicked people, they are being reincarnated in a place called Kafa Kela. And sometimes the person is being reincarnated as a human being without a free choice, such as Down syndrome, autistic kids. I happened to speak to autistic kids about eight years ago when they developed the way to talk to them through the computer. 
If you know an autist cannot say one word, I mean a sentence, he cannot put up together a sentence that makes sense. But in 1981, when they brought the first computer, it happened in New Zealand, in Australia, in England, in the same year. When they brought computers into schools of autistic kids, they were shocked that they're starting to punch sentences on a computer that makes a lot of sense. For instance, one of the autists told his teacher, I love you. He typed on a computer, I love you, because like, she did a lot for him. But all the years that he was there, she was trying to teach him a few words and with no success. He could, his brain could not get the words. But the soul, the soul is a different story. Once they communicate, their fingers typing sentences that make sense and they pass information. Today, there are famous books that were written in Hebrew, I don't know about English, but in Hebrew about kids that were telling who they used to be in their previous life and what, why God reincarnated them in a limited body, such as an autist, and they are deaf and they are mute, and they all say the same thing, that because they used to speak a lot of Lashonara, bad things about people, instigate between people, make fights between people, say derogatory things about people, and enjoying listening got to gossip and bad things that happen to other people. But other than these crimes, everything else was okay with them. They kept the laws of the Torah and everything. And there were, other than that, they were righteous. So God had mercy on them. Instead of giving them a serious punishment, he reincarnated them with becoming deaf and mute, measure for measure, because they used to make crimes with their mouth and ears. Those parts got hurt. And they have, to, they have very short life, if you know, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years maximum, and they die. And it's interesting, all the Down syndrome people have one face if you recognize it. They all look the same, which gives us a hint that God chose an image of somebody, we don't know really who, and they put them in all in the same images, even though the body is created from different parents, different DNA, different genes. They all have the same face, which shows you that it's, a, it's the hand of God. And it's all measure for measure. Now, sometimes a person goes half a shalom to hell, and then after he finishes a portion in hell, he's been reincarnated again. And the way that you left the world in your previous life, this is how you came back to the world. For instance, if in your previous life you were a stingy person, and you did not like to give donation and help the poor and the widows and the synagogues and the yeshiva, which many, many people have a lot of money, but they do not want to contribute anything for society other than themselves. So when they will be reborn, as they're already one year old, they come with the same personality, the same traits. Why? Because it's the same person. It's the same Yitzhak from his previous life. Now his parents call him Daniel, but it's the same person. So if he died stingy, he's born stingy again. But if in his previous life, for instance, he was uh, uh, generous. So as he's born, he's already generous. How do you know? You take two little brothers. One is two years old and the other one is one years old, right? And you give them a bag of pretzels. One, you give one and you give the other. One, you ask him one, he gives you. You ask from the other one, he begins to cry. He doesn't even want to give you one. You ask the third one, he gives you the whole bag. Three different kids. Each one has different amount of generosity. One is very generous, one is so so, one is very stingy. How does those kids know about being generous or being stingy? They have no understanding about anything in life, because this is the way God reincarnated them, the same people. However, if we fail in all of our reincarnations, that's when God takes us to a place which is like a laundromat. It's like a dry clean. That's what called hell. Over there they purified the soul back to the original way when it was created. 